when you started meditating, you got this idea that you were going to be a warrior mm -hmm. and you, it was almost like a download from somewhere. And I'm curious, what do you think that that was that said, you know, you started looking inward and you start to say, okay, I'm going to be a warrior. Do you think that is a, like, do you think that's God? Do you think that is, is the universe? Like, what do you think that the download that says I am a warrior? And then two days later, you see the Navy SEAL poster. What do you think that is? You know, whatever, whatever I think it is, is wrong. Let's just start there. <laughs> right. Cause it's, fair. It's, 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 you know, <laughs> anything that I think about a thought that I have is going to be wrong. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. So just know that right up front. I don't know, but I can tell you what I suspect or kind of what, how I would interpret it. And other people would probably interpret it differently. But I think we do have, I do, I do believe in reincarnation. Let's put it that way. There's a lot of evidence to that. All the spiritual traditions talk about it, including early Christianity and, and my own life kind of points to that and so that we're brought into this or we choose this life and it's actually very very special to have an opportunity to be human this is why it's it's crazy so many people waste it and they don't wake up to that like it is an incredibly precious opportunity because as a human we can self-direct our growth we can evolve and even if we don't wake up to that point life is going to evolve us right that's the point it's one of the points is to evolve your consciousness, your spirit. Now, what, what does that mean? Well, it means that, you know, this idea that we have a body, but this body isn't us. We have a brain, the brain isn't us. We have a mind, we're starting to get closer. That mind is still not us. It's the spirit, that's the true us, right? The essential nature of ourselves. And the spirit is an aspect of God. God's a tough word to use for that. There's many different words from different traditions we could use. Spirit that runs through all things, right? Gaia even, or... Um, that's more of a naturalistic way of looking at it or Brahman, but you know, uh, you know, the, the father, the son and the Holy ghost, right? Father would be God. The son would be the God within us. The Holy ghost would be the spirit that runs through everything. So it's, there's manifestations of that. We have an aspect of that within us, but that aspect within us is a creative expression. It's like almost like a thought that manifests as, you know, as a spirit that emerges with mind. And then it, it becomes a body through that thought, through, you know, through the incarnation process. I know that's pretty metaphysical. At any rate, um, to, get, to pan out a little bit. So sitting on the meditation bench, you're, you're doing what the Tao is called turning the light around. You know, if you consider that we are all light at a, let's, let's use a different version or a different um, lens. What, you know, let's use the physics lens. From the physics lens, you know, we are, obviously there's, you know, organs, then cells, then molecules, and then atoms, and, you know, and then beneath atoms are quarks and pho photons, right? So ultimately, just like any matter, we are ultimately light. And then there's, there's kind of pure light in there, which is the purest form of light is our spiritual energy. And the traditions, the, the spiritual wisdom traditions say that spiritual energy is what allows us to incarnate and is what gives us awareness and it resides in our heart. But it's, you know, of course, um, it has to, in order to express itself in this material world, it has to work through mind, which then uses the body and the body includes the brain and the other aspects of brain, which include the heart and the gut and the, your entire nervous system and your skin and, and everything. So the body is really the brain, but also it's your form of locomotion and acting, you know, me mechanism for acting in the world. So body, mind, body, brain, mind, spirit, there, we can talk about them separately, but they all are one. They're fused as one. Now, mostly because of the way our brain works and the way we're taught in the Western world, we are all outward focused. And that means we're focused. We think that what we see and do is the true, the only reality. And so all of our attention is outward. And so it's akin to like using our eyes 
and sending our light outward all the time. And then, you know, we get reflection backs and that's what helps us create this sense of reality that we're in that's co-created. But when you turn the light around, that's what meditation does. If you close your eyes or, you know, you can learn to do it with open eyes. You close your eyes or soften your gaze and do both. And you turn the flashlight around. So now you're looking within. And that journey within helps you start to appreciate that the real reality starts within and then it's expressed outwardly. And it's kind of like saying that everything happens first in the spiritual realm and then it happens in the physical realm, in the material realm. But and then, and that's why, you know, people who are into new age spirit, you know, stuff think, oh yeah, everything is created in the mind and I can manifest everything I want. Well, that's sort of true, but the reality is everything's created in the spiritual world expressed through the mind. And then the physical world kind of, if you take, you know, profound action, it'll catch up to you. Or if you don't take action, you'll get slapped down or something will kind of reveal itself to you because there's just almost an infinite number of factors kind of affecting this and then you know like the butterfly if like you start thinking a certain way you're affecting those factors and then you're starting to kind of organize the immaterial to affect the material and that's where synchronicities come from and whatnot so so that's what happens when you turn the light around through meditation and you're and you're and you're open-minded and 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 faithful this is what faith is right because you have to become your own experimenter you can't trust anyone else on this you have to and everyone's process and path will be different you become a, a study N equals one where you're the, you're the experiment and you turn the light around in yourself and you begin to ask better questions. You begin to genuinely look for awareness, consciousness itself. You look for your spirit and, and you could do this with imagery. You can do this just with pure intention. You can do this with prayer and contemplation. And there's a specific process that's taught by different traditions. You know, the Zen had one process, you know, the, the Tibetan Buddhists have another, the yogis have another. And I have a different one with unbeatable mind based upon my understanding and what Westerners need. And, um, and so to kind of like cap your question, to see if I can actually answer it, sitting on that bench, getting information. When I turn the flashlight around and look within, how did I get information that said, you know, my archetypal energy right now was to really be a warrior and a leader and to and to fulfill that in a way that was unique to me. And that was my, that was what you would call my dharma. So there's karma and dharma in that yoga tradition you're probably familiar with. So dharma is, this is your calling. This is what you're meant to do in this incarnation, this lifetime. And, and karma is kind of all the energy, bad and good that you dragged into this life. And then you're either going to burn that off or, or accrue more, right? And so if you don't fulfill your dharma calling, then you accrue more negative karma and you're going to have to come back. You know, this is the theory, come back and kind of do a, do a do over, right? <laughs> and if you don't fulfill your calling, or even if your calling was like, maybe just to learn one healthy thing or help one person, but you're, you're an asshole your whole life and you're, you commit crimes and you're a murderer, then guess what? You know, you kind of go back to zero. You, you accrue more negative karma, you devolve and then, you know, you got to hit bottom and then kind of crawl your way out of that. It's fascinating stuff for me. And I know um, some people think it's kind of different for a Navy SEAL to talk this way, but I was a SEAL for 20 years and this philosophy and idea served me very well, right? It kept me alive on the battlefield. It helped me contextualize everything about why I was a warrior and also to have deep respect and even love for my enemies. So I was not, um, willing to take unnecessary you know violence unless it was like really spot on and required you know what i mean